For more videos, please subscribe and click that notification bell so you can be notified when I post a new video. Thank you for supporting my channel. What's up you guys, this is Adana. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey and thank you guys to all of you who have subscribed thus far. So this is another PA Q&A Tuesday. I will be answering you guys' questions that you left on previous videos. So if you want your question possibly answered on a future video, go ahead and leave that question right now in the comment section below. Let's get into it because that's what you guys are here for. I also would like to know what your thoughts are on working part-time time as a PA, especially as a mom. Is it something you'd consider and how possible is it to work part time in the profession? Thanks again. Okay, so um, is it something that I would consider? Let me answer that first part. Yeah, it's something I would consider, but I mean, I feel like I would have considered it if I was already a PA for a long time and then I was now having my kids, my kids are gonna be pretty much like grown. <laughs> well, like, not grown, like they're all in their seven and three now, but still, you know, like as I'm going through my career, like they're gonna be in school and stuff. So um, I, it's not like I'm gonna really be missing much, if anything at all. I do have a professor that is kind of like a part-time PA, I guess you can say. I don't really think you can be a, a part-time PA, but she's wor she works kind of part-time. She only works a couple days out of the week, and then she actually comes in on Friday to act um, to do our class. And it works for her, you know, where she's at in her life right now with her kids, and she loves it. So it is a possibility. If you get with the right company or the right um, office and job, then absolutely it's a possibility for you to work part-time as a PA, especially for those moms that wanna be at home with their kids and have as much time with them as possible. Um, for me, I don't think that that's necessarily something that I will do in the future. Uh, maybe as I'm trying to wind down from my career, I might do something part-time, like when I'm like 80 or something and it's time for me to retire, but I still wanna like keep up with the youngins or something, I don't know. But no, it's not something that I really am thinking about currently. I kind of just want to get in, hit the ground running and be in this career. So that's really where I'm at right now in my life. What is the advantage of taking the MCAT over GRE? So um, I really, I've never heard of there being an advantage of taking the MCAT over the GRE. I, I took the MCAT because I was trying to get into medical school and then I had to take the GRE because I know most schools require the GRE and not necessarily all the schools that I was applying to would take my MCAT scores. I think that you're kind of just better off taking the GRE because most PA schools, well, if not all PA schools will accept your GRE and most PA schools require the GRE. Some don't. Some don't require you to take a GRE. But when, when it comes to MCAT scores, not the majority of schools don't accept an MCAT score. So I feel like there's more so a disadvantage of taking the MCAT over the GRE because you're kind of limiting yourself to certain schools. But that's just my opinion. Um, if you want to get that answer for you yourself, like specifically per school that you're applying to, just go to their website and make sure that they will accept an MCAT score over a GRE score. What happens when a PA program is on provisional status by the ARC PA? So um, being on provisional status is not an issue. Being on provisional means that you are like a new fledging PA program. So usually I think it's about like five years or so that you're on provisional status. Um, I mean, my school is still currently on provisional status and that just means that they're new and they are accredited. So, I mean, that's really what you want and what you're concerned about as a pre-PA student or um, a future PA student at that particular school. You wanna know, is that school accredited? Because am I gonna be able to sit for my pants, which is the certification exam for you to get that C at the end of your PA and actually be able to practice. So um, when a school is on provisional status, they are con like continuously, ARC is reviewing them. Uh, you'll have your initial review and then again, I believe in five months, uh, five years, you'll have your second review. So now the thing is um, to take into consideration if your school is on provisional status and then when ARC reviews them, they get on probation, that's something that you might wanna be, you know, 
cognizant of and aware of because um, if for some reason your school loses their accreditation at all um, while you're in school you're not going to be able to sit for your pants it used to be as long as you entered into a pa program that was accredited that you could sit for your certification exam but now um, it has changed recently and now it states that you have to have graduated from an accredited program so those are all things that you want to just keep in mind and be considerate of when you're choosing your PA school. But um, apart from that, provisional status just means that your school is new. They will get reviewed in about five years to see if they get continuing status and then there's nothing to worry about. And um, that is gonna happen with my school in 2020. But that's what happens with respect to provisional status. It just means you're a new school. Also, what information should be crucial in deciding which PA school you should attend? What should we ask the recruiter when deciding if this is the right PA program for us? So, I mean, that's kind of personal. That's something that you have to look inside of yourself, um, you know, in terms of like housing and all of that stuff. Like I asked about a lot of like outreach work because that's what I'm really passionate about. I want to like go like feed the homeless, like that kind of thing. That's what we, you know, like me and my husband did um, prior to me getting into PA school. And it's something that I like to do, like kind of just give back because I know how hard it is. I, you know, I, I know how hard it is living from month to month type of thing, paycheck to paycheck. And uh, just being able to get help from somebody is essential and, and it's a blessing. So I asked about that kind of service work. What kind of service work did you do in your community? Community, if they had like a mission and it was international and like okay well that's great that you're doing all this stuff internationally be, but what are you doing domestically those are important things for me you know things that you can already find out for yourself like what their pass rate is and you know how many students are graduating that kind of stuff um, I don't really think that you should ask that because you can go and do the research and find that out for yourself on their website but other like intangible things that you may not necessarily know the nitty gritty about like hey so community wise how involved are you all or how what is the typical you talk about this free clinic what does that mean what do we actually do during that free clinic um time that we're there with patients so things like that is what i asked about depending on the school depending on what they're pushing in front of you then you should ask absolutely you don't necessarily have to go there with questions um, i do suggest that you find some questions to ask the recruiters when you're on your interview or when you're going in for kind of like a a viewing day um, or an open house but once you once they've actually made their presentation to you I absolutely highly suggest you have like pen and pad and you're writing down questions uh, anything that you may have not understood um, or anything that you need a little bit more clarity on write that down and ask them because that shows initiative that shows that you're actually interested and that you were listening so i feel it's like it's all specific to the school with respect to asking the recruiters questions but for me when i was deciding about pa school i decided by proximity to my family i also looked at you know the cost of the school the size of the school the student to teacher ratio because i wanted to make sure that i would be able to access my professors um i did look at their pass rate which they didn't have that as just yet because their students hadn't yet taken the pants but now it's 100 percent ah go us then I also looked at just like the professors and what their background was and I looked at all of the things that they were doing in the community because that's what I was interested in so you kind of just tailor it to yourself um, but hopefully this helps you know hopefully this video will help all of you guys who have asked your questions um, everything is really specific to you but you can go ahead and look at the schools themselves that you're also trying to apply to and make sure that you're getting the clarity that you need. Thank you guys for leaving your questions. If any of you have new questions that have sprung from this video, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them on a future video. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, go ahead right now. And you know what I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna tell you. Go ahead and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.